Hi, I'm Mark Captain from Sports Relations and today I just want to talk a little bit about the acquisition of team sports skills and the role that repetition plays in that in terms of practice design and environments that players are exposed to. It's always topical. Uh, it's become more so this week after a blog post by the wonderful Daniel Coyle. And if you don't know Daniel's work, certainly search for him. He's got a couple of great books, The Talent Code and Little Book of Talent, all about how talent develops and developing expertise and the training environments that create that. And he was talking about uh, the Navy SEALs and a documentary or a film um, about the, the SEALs that went in and raided Bin Laden's compound and were successful ultimately in that mission and the type of training they did and his quite strong statement to round off that article uh, was that quote below all about repetition. Now as you can see if you read through through a snippet of the article I've got there he makes some really valid uh, and, and revealing insights about the type of training or the type of repetition that they're doing um, in preparation for that raid in terms of training in full-scale mock-ups that replicated the exact layout down to every doorway, gate, wall, full-scale replicas, going through different scenarios so that decisions would have to be made based on scenarios that occur and basically building up the right brains for the job. All spot on, great insight. Um, great case study about uh, training for and developing high level skills or expertise for it to achieve a certain task. Now what's happened of course this week is then even some of the comments in that blog post and some of the tweets we see that the key point that seems to be taken out is just about repetition and particularly could be team sport coaches so one of the comments was about soccer and and a lot of people were just interpreting and taking out repetition as the key and they're overlooking some of those key points uh, that have been circled in blue there. So I thought it would be worth going through and saying, yes, repetition is critical, but what kind of repetition, and particularly as it relates to team sports and invasive team sports like the below. So Australian rules footy, basketball, soccer, rugby, hockey, a lot of other uh, sports fall into that category as well that are quite dynamic and have got complex interactions between teammates, between uh, attacking and defending players. So let's take an example of a task that uh, occurs that needs to be completed or solved, a problem that needs to be solved in these typical invasive team sports. So there's a picture of Aussie rules, a task, that task having to be completed in a, in a situation that achieves this objective. Transfer of practice to match conditions depends on the extent to which practice resembles the match. And notice that's a quote from 1993, 20 years ago. So this is not a new theory, but this is a key point. And Daniel mentioned it in his blog post when he's talking about the mock-ups and replicas and different situations. He's, he said that. Okay, he said that's the type of repetition they're going through. And research about practice environments for team sports in particular agrees with that. Another uh, term that's often used now in skill acquisition circles is something called representative task design. So the task needs to closely represent or resemble the task as it occurs in a real match. Just like that picture's perhaps showing. So to make it, to achieve that goal, what are some of the elements of propelling the ball to a teammate so that they gain possession? Obviously it involves the motor skill itself of actually passing the ball or the physical movement, whether that's using the foot, the hand, the head in soccer or other body parts. But obviously there's an element of the motor skill of the actual passing itself and that's the obvious one. But there's some other things and elements that influence it. There's element that uh, it's an externally paced motor skill, meaning that your decision about when to dispose of the ball or to pass the ball is related to the time and space you have, which is normally created by the opposition or the defenders. It's not a self-paced skill. So we're not talking about, uh, say, penalty kicks on goal in rugby or soccer or a set shot in Aussie rules where you've got up to 30 seconds. That would be called a self-paced skill. We're talking about the open, dynamic, general play, passing to a teammate is externally paced. 
and it also involves the element every time we're passing we're basically looking and deciding who and where can we pass to and in again the more technical term is that's a perceptual cognitive skill so that needs to be in there that's an element that exists in a match other sometimes elements you can't see include fatigue so fatigue impacts your ability to complete this task Sometimes the score, whether you're up or down, can impact your decision making and how you complete this task and what option you might take. And the crowd, the crowd noise sometimes in terms of a distraction, but also crowd in terms of sometimes pressure. And research has shown that there's an interesting effect in sometimes in finals that home crowds actually add pressure to the home team and cause them to perform worse. So that all these factors and elements influence how that task is completed and perhaps the difficulty of that task. So they're all present in a match. So what those quotes above are saying is that the practice activity ideally needs to include those elements. And the more elements it includes from the match, the better the transfer from practicing that task into the real match situation. So what you can look at is a continuum, if you like, from in terms of, say, this representative task design moving from low representative task design so the task in practice doesn't really look like the the match situation up to high so how we've got it at the moment if we were doing a practice activity that revolved around the task of passing to teammates that satisfied and included all these elements obviously we're very high up on that continuum and that should satisfy um, the transfer into match conditions we'd hope now it's often unrealistic to do that and let's say for example the bottom three here it can be hard to achieve that in training not impossible particularly fatigue but let's say we take those out so there now we're doing an activity that doesn't really include those elements so our on our continuum the representation now has dropped down a little bit now getting to the key ones what if we now just drop out The element where you have to look and decide so scanning and making a decision where now the activity it's premeditated you know before you even get the ball where you're passing it to next that significantly decreases this representative task design and probably we've take by doing that we probably removed opposition players which also means now that we've our our skill is probably no longer externally paced by the time and space we have and the pressure from opposition we're probably now in a position where we can really decide how quickly or slowly we have to move the ball on and so now with all these things all we have left in our activity is the actual passing motor skill itself and we're now quite low on the continuum here so this has relatively low value in terms of now transferring into match conditions and so we've gone from a, an activity perhaps like this to one that looks like this stationary handball no defenders predetermined and as you can see this does not really resemble the game and yet this type of repetition is often what coaches will jump onto when we start talking about repetition and when Daniel's article spoke about it this is what they often uh, have in their heads So are we saying this type of repetition is always bad or if we can't always include these elements it's bad? No, there's times where if you're a young kid and you're practicing on your own, passing against a wall for example, no, of course we're not saying that. There's times when you're with a friend or one other person you can pass the ball between yourself by all means. But we're probably saying in group practice activities uh, we need to be trying to achieve where we can uh, inclusion of these elements because ultimately if we can do that then 20 repetitions of a task that includes all these elements is most likely to be better than 50 repetitions where most of these elements are excluded except for the actual motor skill itself so that's the take-home message from from this hopefully that you've got is by all means yes repetition is important but the type of repetition it needs to be tasks that closely represent, resemble, mock up, look like a real match situation. If you've got any thoughts on that, uh, you can get me on Twitter at uppio one or flick me an email as well. Thanks for listening.